What's going on, everybody? It is December 27th. We have a Wednesday slate. It's not bad. Uh, Ten games. There's a lot of, like, middle-of-the-road games going on. But we should be able to find some value. And, um... I don't know. Let's make it fun. <laughs> um, I'm trying out this new view... I uh, put together a pivot table of like everything that I look at so I know that this is going to be overwhelming um, just to go through everything at the top so everybody knows where I'm looking. Uh, Vegas line is the implied points. Salary should be, and this is split between um, DK and FanDuel so they're both in one view. Uh, salary should be self-explanatory. Minutes should be self-explanatory. Um, I have three separate projections in here. One is EPS, which is whatever ends up in the uh, spreadsheets that I update, or like whatever's on my website, that's what's in this column. Um, I have Fantasy Cruncher in here as like a guide post for myself, and then I do a uh, weighted average um, fantasy points per minute, so recent games are worth more than, you know, games in the first week of the season. I just sort of use this as a calibration point to see, like, how well people are playing. Um, it's great for, you know, guys like, where would be a good example? So, like, Carl Anthony Towns, um, I'm, my regular projection system is a little bit higher on him. He's actually not been playing as well on a per-minute basis this year, so it's always good to see sort of, like, who's having a good year, who's not having a good year type stuff. So I take all three of those, I blend them together into one number, um, just because, you know, wisdom of the crowds type stuff. It's all we, We're always better off. Uh, I do a little, like, variance calculation of those three numbers just to see if any situation is really off. So, like, Drew Holiday, for example, my number's pretty low on him. The... Uh, projection per minute is really low on him but fantasy cruncher is really high on him so he pops off with you know a really big variance number um you know it just sort of lets me know like which guys are projected pretty normally which guys have some variation uh, and then from there it's the normal value metric so per 1000 the preference metric that i have the that i stole from some fantasy football site five years ago um where you boost up the projection source. This is all in the, the FAQ on my website. Um, I've got expected usage for the game, uh, the percentage of a player's fantasy production that is just scoring, so just points, um, their upside and downside, which is one and a half standard deviations in either direction, and then their percent chance of hitting 5x or 6x. Um, not necessarily the most reliable metric in the world, um, it skews a little bit to uh, guys that are low salary, but I do sort of just like it as a visual. Um, and you got to remember, it's it's all about the aggregate. So for Cleveland, for example, we have all of these guys listed with you know decent um, six x percentages, but the total of those is 143. So basically, you're expecting maybe one and a half guys out of this group to hit 6x. Um, so that's sort of the way you need to look at it. Same for 5x. Like if you total that up, it gets 314. Um, so you're expecting like three or four would be the likely scenario of guys that go over 5x. So I've got both sites um, lined up here. Slowly going to build in a little bit more visualization so I can see things a little clearer. But this is going to be a good spot so that I can, you know, shout out whether or not a guy is a better play on FanDuel or DK or anything like that. So I'm going to try this. I know it's a lot of data on the screen. If anybody has any thoughts or things they want to see, let me know. Um, let's dive in now. So first game up, Hornets and Celtics. Um, Hornets 102.75 implied total, which would be 14th on the night. So we're in a bit of a cold spell, so I got my my Redskins beanie on. I don't anticipate liking a lot here, but we shall see. I mean, I have to look at Kemba. 
even though I don't want to. Just against Kyrie. Nothing jumps off the page here um, besides MKG. Uh, he looks great, but at the same time, he has been getting, you know, less and less minutes. He played 23 in the last one, 22 a couple days ago. When he's getting 30, I love it, but if he's going to play like 25 minutes, that's a problem. And I know he's, I think he's a little dinged up. Yeah, questionable for tonight. Shoulder. Like, it's just... Where's Charlotte at? Let's really sort these in order of something other than just Vegas total. Let's do it alphabetically. That way it'll be easier to see. There we go. So Charlotte. You know, a lot of value on the DK side. The salaries are suppressed. MKG. Yeah, like a, the projections are pretty normal, but he's 4,100 on DK, so he only needs to get to 20 to hit 5x instead of 25. His 6x number on DK is his 5x number on FanDuel. I mean, that generally means they're basically the same price. Um, and you can see that the 6x percentage is similar to the 5x percentage on FanDuel. <laughs> Um, I think he's a really good value if he's going to play on DraftKings. 4,100 makes it a lot easier to fit him in. I don't, I don't see the, the interest in paying, playing up for him on, uh, on DK. Or, sorry, flip that. I don't see the interest in paying up for him on FanDuel. I think he's just a, a DK guy. Um, I don't. I don't love the idea of of Dwight, but I, I understand it. Um, everybody's just like a down-the-line type guy tonight. I, there's nothing here. You're forcing it if, if Charlotte is a spot that you're looking for. They look great on DK and like like I said you're going to get two of these guys that are going to hit 6x I think MKG has sort of the best chance to do that but it's not like anybody would be surprised if Kemba went out and dropped 50 he's 6600 on FanDuel or on DK right now I need to rotate these I'm used to FanDuel being on the left okay 6600 on DK is so criminally low for Kemba. Like, what was he recently? I'm spending way too much time on the Hornets in a game that I don't even want these guys. Yeah, to think that he was in the eights two weeks ago and is now at 66. Now, here's the interesting part. So, Kemba will be a really good example. So, I have him at 33 points. Fantasy Cruncher has him at 33 points. Using his fantasy points per minute this year, I have him at 33 points. Like, dude is just even across the board. But 33 points at DK is different than 33 points at FanDuel when you have $900 of a gap in salary. I think I have to like Kemba tonight on DK. I'm not as worried about the, the threes shooting for Kemba, and he's still going to try to get to the rim. Boston's got a pretty narrow profile. Let's move to Boston now. Celtics, 104.25 implied total, which is 10th on the day. Uh, no Jalen Brown. Um, no Marcus Morris, I don't believe, and probably no Semi. Um, they're all supposed to be doubtful today, I believe. So let's see. We want to look at 
I think this is a good spot for Jason Tatum. I think it's a really good spot for Terry Rozier. And I'm willing to look at Kyrie. I need to get a new mouse. This one's been like double clicking um, you know, when I don't want it to, which is never helpful. So Tatum, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. But, you know, with uh, with Brown being out, I think that he can get a little bit of an increased roll. He's probably a couple hundred dollars cheaper than he should be. So, you know, I like him on both sites. It's not a guy that I would have a ton of, but I would want to have a little bite of him. Um, the guy that I would want to have a ton of, though, is probably Terry Rozier. Uh, should just be in line to get some increased minutes. And at 3800 on FanDuel, um, it's kind of a no-brainer. I don't love him as much on DK, um, but being able to fit Terry Rozier in on FanDuel with that price is, is pretty good. It's really reliable. Um, just being able to... Uh, like, he's such a good rebounder. That he helps to you know offset anything. He still gets 44%. He's you know he's a little bit below average in getting his fantasy production from points, but such a good rebounder for a guard. Um, Kyrie, basically the same price on both sites. He needs 43. How has Kyrie normally done against uh, Charlotte? Smattering of nothing interesting. I think it's fine. I think Tatum and Rozier are the only things here. Um, Kemba's a play because of the salary. But really, if you're taking anybody here, um, these are just pieces to help other things fit together better. So now we'll move on to Indiana. Pacers 105.25 implied total, which would be eight, tied for eighth um, on the night. Mavs coming off a interesting performance last night. Pacers, so it's hard to not like Oladipo. Price keeps going down. Um, I assume that I'm going to like Miles Turner again. So let's see. Like Oladipo is the perfect example of my projection system. And here's how you can see... Um, just what I'm doing and sort of the way that guys change. I've got Oladipo at 34.8 fantasy points. That would be what you guys would see on my website. Um, and that's based on, you know, every single game he's played in his career so far. All the old shit gets, you know, minuscule weight. But, you know, he's still being weighted a lot on a year of the thunder. And, you know, his time in the magic. Um... Fantasy Cruncher has him 14 points higher than that. And just his per nu per minute numbers, just from this year, would have him at 43.4. So that's, you know, almost nine points higher. That's how big of a leap he has taken. And I think by using sort of the per minute numbers in association with um, my projection system and like any other system that you want to use if you're blending them all together... It sort of helps because I have a lot of regression to the mean in my system. So it's really hard. It, it, it almost takes a full year for Oladipo to like bring this whole projection up. And I'm happy with that because there's no way to know what's for real and what's not. But this sort of gives me that shade of bumping him higher that I think is useful. And that brings him up to 40, which is still underrating him and will continue to underrate him 
because this is just dragging it down so much. But, you know, just so you guys can understand where these sort of numbers are coming from. Um, man, why wouldn't he have a big game? Then again, I thought DeRozan would have a big game against Dallas yesterday, and that didn't happen. Um, Miles Turner, 8,400 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. It should come as no surprise that I like Turner on DK. And just thinking about who they're playing, you know, I'm not too worried about um, anything in the post for Indiana or from Dallas. I mean, I don't really love anything else. I don't think that I'm going to go to Oladipo tonight, even though I'll probably go off. Um, Thad, just, I don't like the price. Everybody else's price is sort of normal. Bojan, I guess, can be talked about. He needs 4300 on DK. Um, I think I only want to take a look at Turner. No need to force it. Um, what did I say he needed? 6,700 is his salary on DK, so 33 for 5x, or call it 40. Not a, it was a rough one yesterday, but, you know, 50-pointer right before Christmas, a 40-pointer here. It has the ability to provide a ton of value. Um, with that price on DK, you just sort of have to have a bunch of him. Because if he goes off, it's going to be monumental for you. All right, to Dallas now. Break up the Mavs. Dirk has been playing really well. It's just hard because you know he's not going to go out there and like stretch himself and play 34 minutes. You just need to be on the right side of Dirk when he puts up you know, two fantasy points per minute or something stupid. Mavs, 99.25 implied total. 18th on the night. Um... Wes Matthews and Dirk both look okay. Wes Matthews in particular. Dirk on a back-to-back, -back though, so I would avoid that at all costs. the hell is Dallas? Oh, yeah, they're in alphabetical order now. Okay, I don't... Wes Matthews, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. I mean, I get the idea of wanting him on DK, but uh, he doesn't. It's not a good spot. These guys, none of these guys look really good except for Dirk. Dirk having just a monster year. His per minute numbers are just ginormous. That's not true. That's his fantasy cruncher. He's playing as, as he normally does. Which at his age is crazy. I don't see the need to jump on anybody here. Most of the salaries are, you know, where they should be. Yogi Ferrell's playing less minutes. Dennis Smith playing a couple extra, but his salary is still, you know, not awesome. If Dirk weren't on a back-to-back, -back, I'd be interested, but I'm going to pass. We're going to go to the next one. Uh, Hawks and Wizards. Hawks, 103 implied total, which would be 13th on the night. They are five and a half point underdogs against the Wiz. We will be uh, starting up live before lock again tomorrow. Today is the last day that my parents are here, so we'll get back to the swing of things right after that. Oh, there's the bad paste. Everybody drink. Okay, nothing of interest here. If anybody's got a good salary, I think Schroeder does. But again, not the spot that we're looking for. Schroeder is 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK, so he needs 40. Um, he's done that twice in his last six. He had a 37-pointer 
in another. Um, I don't think the Wizards are the spot to do this, but at the very least, I think I should look to see how he's played against them in the past. He probably got a ton of games against them. Okay, so he has had really big games against the Wiz. So, I'm okay with it. I don't want a bunch of him, though, but I think having him in a couple lineups is okay. And then, does anybody else stand out as interesting? All the salaries seem to be about where I would want them. I think John Collins is probably the only guy I'd be interested in. How did his breakdown look? That's not bad. It's all shots at the rim. Collins needs 33 on FanDuel. Did it a couple nights ago. Did it in his, one of his first two back. I think he's just priced correctly. Uh, there, there's no need to force Atlanta. Let's go to the Wiz now, which I, I think I'll be a little bit more interested in. Fourth highest implied total, 108.5. Um, this one, I expect to see a few things that we like, protect, particularly Bradley Beal, but let's find out. Um, Wiz. Okay, so let's see here. There's going to be a lot to like. All right, Porter. I need to find a better way to sort these clowns. I guess by projection is probably better than salary or by minutes okay so we'll look at wall 8700 fan duel 80 8900 on dk um these are much better play on fan duel how has wall done against atlanta I'm digging John Wall. I don't really love it on fan or on on DK, but you know I'm okay with it. I don't think he'll pop up a lot, so it's not gonna woo, not gonna be a big deal. Beal, seventy eight on FanDuel, seventy four on DK. So he needs like, we'll just say forty would be a good spot for him. He did it on Christmas. And he had two others when Otto Porter was out. Three others when Otto Porter was out. Hmm. Is this a good spot for Otto Porter? Or for Bradley Beal? I'm all over the place today, guys. I think Beal might be forcing it a little bit. He's not not as bad on DK, but I think I'd rather have Wall here. Porter and Ubre. Man, these prices are so weird. Porter, 6,400 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. So he needs 32 on FanDuel. Now, I'm going to pass on Porter. I think that I want to look at Ubre. 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Let's just say he needs 25. You know, he's been there in the last two. That's sort of his ceiling if everybody's healthy. I don't think that he can get to 43 with everybody healthy. Oh, I wanted to like so much more here. Uh, Gortat on FanDuel for sure. 
is priced as a thousand dollars cheaper. And then I don't, I think that, so like Markeith is in a really good spot. Um, and so is Mike Scott, for that matter. I think Markeith has been trending to get a little bit more minutes. So in a GPP scenario, I want to have a few bullets of Markeith because I think that he can provide something. No. There we go. Okay, to the Bulls. Bulls hosting the Knicks. Um... 105.25 implied total, tied for eighth with the Pacers. They are one and a half point favorites at home versus the Knicks. I don't expect to like anything here just because they've been playing together for a couple days. Their salary should be normalized, and they're probably a little high from this hot stretch. So it's tough to want to. It's tough to identify anything here besides the the three point shooting because obviously the Knicks are extreme in their defense. So everybody but Chris Dunn is probably in the best spot. Although Chris Dunn also gets an easy matchup. Chris Dunn is 7,900 on FanDuel. 7,200 on DK. Um, I actually like Chris Dunn, but I don't think it's the best matchup for him. Miritich's price is the same on both sites. Markinen's the same on both sites. Justin Holiday is basically the same. Portis is the same. Denzel Valentine is basically what it should be. There's nobody priced weird on this site. Like they're just everybody's flat across the board. I don't want any part of Portis or Nawaba. Although Nawaba probably grades out really well here, right? No, nope. nope. Holiday, Valentine, Miritich, Markkanen. Those are the four we need to look at. So if I had to take one of these guys, it actually might be Justin Holiday. Holiday needs somewhere in the 25 to 30 range. He's been just mid-20s for a week now. I think it's just Chris Dunn, and I don't but I don't love it. I mean he gets to the rim, which is great, but you know, not the best shooter in the world. He lives in the mid-range, which is something the Knicks snuff out. But if Chris Dunn can just get himself into the mid-range and find that open pass, he could has a chance to get a lot of assists. So I guess I'm okay with Chris Dunn. Who does Chris Dunn throw the most assists to? Where can I find it? Where is that shit? I don't think it's on here. Down assists. I know this is out there. I just want to see, like, is there anybody he just goes to more than anybody else? Maybe later. Nope. Is past this dashboard what I want? Or is that just going to be... Oh, thank you. Rolo, Denzel.
Denzel Valentine, but it's pretty balanced. Denzel, Markin, and Holiday, it's all it's all really balanced. Okay. Nah, I'm not gonna force any other bulls. Whoops, see? Random double clicks again. But I do like Chris Dunn. That was a long way around to get to Chris Dunn. All right, to the Knicks. Knicks, 103.75 implied total. Nothing special there. It's 12th. I really wanted something to pop off the page there for the Bulls, but it certainly did not. Knicks, 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 Knicks. We'll take a look at the zinger, although I don't love it. Although, who the fuck is going to guard him? Certainly not Miritich. Certainly not Markkanen. Uh, you might be in for a really good matchup. <sighs> okay. Knicks. Yeah, I, th I like Porzingis. 9,200 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. I'm in for the zinger. I think he's got a really good matchup. And then Cantor, 6,000 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. That's a great price for him on FanDuel. You definitely want to look at Enos Cantor on FanDuel. No interest in Frankie Smokes. Courtney Lee, 6,500 on FanDuel and 5,100 on DK. Kind of like him by default there. So let's do that. He graded out okay. Let's do that. Let's do Anus Cantor on FanDuel. And Courtney Lee on DK. I don't need this anymore. Next up, uh, Timberwolves hosting the Denver Nuggets. They just play. This is one of those weird home and home joints. Huh, no, last week. Uh, 109.25 implied total. Second for the Timberwolves. So we definitely want to dig in here. Um, Denver, not the best team defensively, if we're being honest. And Jokic coming off a game where he got the gate for a flagrant two. Would be interesting. Going to have to make that choice between um, Towns and Jokic. Well, I'm interested to see what Towns' salary is on DK right now. Because it has been uh, criminally low. Still is. So I'm going to have a ton of Towns on DK, that's for sure. Um, I think Jimmy Butler looks pretty good. I think Jeff Teague looks great. So let's get into it. Uh, Bielitsa should be, or you know, is back. He got some burn in the last one. It'll be um, interesting to see how he gets integrated because I think he really helps their spacing. Okay. So right off the bat, I mean, Towns is 10-5 on FanDuel and 8,700 on DK. Um, he should just be owned on DK. It, you'd be silly not to. I don't know what they're doing. Oh, that's not how he hyphenates his name. It's not Anthony Towns is the last name. So just right off the bat, you need to do that. It's He's going to be in probably 80% of my lineups, if I had to guess. Sorry, work email. Now, Butler, 8,900 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. So, you know, nothing's, nothing too crazy there. He has been playing better lately. Um, 
So let's say he needs 45 for value. He's done that in his last two and in five of his last seven. So then what the big takeaway there is how much has his salary gone up? Because it doesn't seem like it's gone up all that much. And it hasn't. He, he's had all of these monster games, and his salary is down. So, and that's on DK, but, you know, he's not terribly, he's not prohibitively expensive. So, I'm fine with Butler. And I'm fine with Butler on both sites. Now, Teague. 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. I, you know, I like him on both sites as well. There's The balance of the stacks of uh, Minnesota tonight are going to be pretty good. Because I think you need to have a lot of them. All of this, is, all this looks great. I don't want any Taj since Bielitsa's back. I don't want any Wiggins because he's Wiggins. And he has been just dreadful. He's three... So, like, Wiggins is basically the opposite Oladipo. Wiggins' old stats have him at 29 fantasy points on FanDuel, and his per-minute stats this year are 26. It's really hard to be three full points below where you should be. That's that's just really a not good year. Like, he can go off because he's Andrew Wiggins, but I'm going to avoid it. So I'm going to have a healthy amount of Teague, Butler, and Towns, and I'll have them rotated in. But Towns will be my crown jewel um, just because of his price. Denver Nuggets now. Uh, Nugs, 103.75 implied total, which is not high. <laughs> it's 12. Uh, yeah. It's too hot with this fucking coffee and this hat on, but I can't take the hat off because I've got horrible, horrible bed head slash hat head right now. I'm not dealing with that on the internet. Okay, um, that's actually not shabby. We do want to pay attention to Trey Lyles. We want to pay attention to Will Barton, who got some extra burn last night, which makes me happy. I think that Jokic could have a decent game, so we want to look at everybody here. I'm anxious to see Jokic coming off of the, uh, the ejection, if he's got a fire under his ass how did Jokic do against Towns I think Towns went off right okay so Jokic hasn't been anything special against Minnesota Towns hammered on them right I need 48 and a half okay but has normally hammered on them oh I love Carl Towns tonight Whew. 80 lineup 80 percent of my lineups for sure there's got to be crazy injuries. He's got to be injured, basically, for me to take him out. There's no spread on those uh, Nuggets projections. Oh, we're just dialed in. Um, all right, Jokic, 91 and 86. Like, he's... I like it. I, I mean, I'd be silly not to. I think this is probably the best game to stack from a fantasy perspective. But at the same time, like, I'm not going to force feed any of this. Will Barton, 5,800 on DK is one that I like a lot. So Barton needs 31 on FanDuel. Played 36 minutes last night. I'm probably going to avoid this, actually. I feel like I'm forcing the nugs. Nobody has a crazy salary differential. I guess Trey Lyles is someone that I have to be looking at. 5,000 on FanDuel, 44 on DK. So 25 for Lyles. That's just where he is. Um, I like that as a as a guy to fit in the plug in the pieces there. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Uh, I don't think there's anything else for Denver. I think Wilson Chandler is just sort of where he's supposed to be now. I don't mind taking him, particularly on DK, but I should mark that down. 
I'll have little pieces of Denver. So this is going to be similar to Sacramento a couple nights ago where I don't want to have a bunch of Denver guys, but I think that having one Denver guy in a bunch of lineups is a good plan. All right, next we go to New Orleans. Number one team on the board today, uh, 115.75 implied total, which is, as I said, first 10-point favorites at home against the Brooklyn Nets. And, oh boy, are we going to want some stuff here. Who's it going to be? Uh, Anthony Davis, come on down. You look amazing. Man, Boogie shoots way more threes than AD. How is that possible? Okay, anyway. Right off the bat, I just want Anthony Davis. I don't think that I need to go over it, but everything stands to be great for him. Uh, 11-2 on FanDuel, 10-8 on DK. Just love it. Brooklyn has nothing for him. Give me Anthony Davis. I will have a lot of Anthony Davis and Towns together. Thanks, DK Pricing. Now, Boogie. 11-4 on FanDuel, 11-5 on DK. He needs, I don't know, between 55 and 60. never that he's in the four like i don't um, i don't want boogie tonight he can go off but boogie will be a fade for me drew holiday 7700 on both sites i think that he looks pretty good on FanDuel. he needs we'll say 40 which he's only done once in the last five but he's been 33 or higher in four or five so it's not going to totally sink you um I think Drew looks okay on FanDuel. I don't really want him on DK. And now we'll look at... Do we need Rondo or Eton Moore or Cunning, any of those guys? They're all priced right where they should be. Nothing too crazy. Fantasy Cruncher loves Rondo tonight against Brooklyn. I could see that. Um, needs 27, so you'd like to see him hit 30. She hasn't done it all. He's been getting less and less minutes, so I'm not forcing that. Man, I'd like some news to come out of New Orleans. They, they, they should have more uh, interesting fantasy guys tonight. Now... Brooklyn themselves, uh, 105.75 implied total line, which is actually 7th. Um, so the scoring should be in droves in this one. Oh, that's going to be a bad copy, I could tell. Let's try that. Okay, we're going to like a lot of Brooklyn. Crab, Hollis, Jefferson, Dinwiddie, uh, Levert. Joe Harris sprained his ankle, so I'm hoping he's just out. I have an unhealthy obsession with Brooklyn. They're just, the prices are ridiculous on DK. So, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson is $1,300 cheaper on DK than FanDuel. 77 here, 6400 here. Um... I'm more than okay with taking him. Uh, did I really not? Oh, I see where I did it. So that's one. I don't even have to scroll. Dinwiddie, 69 and 69. So I don't have a ton of interest there. Probably have more interest on FanDuel. The price isn't the best. I would like him a little bit lower. So Dinwiddie will be a skip for me. Levert, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. So he needs, we'll just say 30. Yeah. 
been in those high 20s recently. I'm okay with Levert. And I'm fine with him on both sites. Actually, man, that feels like a force. Yeah, that's a. I'm forcing that. Crab. 5,100 on FanDuel. 4,200 on DK. He needs 25 on FanDuel for value. It's been short of that, but I think that between the matchup and the price on DK, it'd be hard to ignore him. I don't know why I put Rondé Hollis Jefferson for FanDuel when I meant DK. Tamari Carroll, 56 and 53, so I'm fine there. I don't see anybody else that jumps off the page. If Joe Harris is out, you know, we might want to take a look at Nick Stauskas. Now, Oklahoma City Thunder hosting the Toronto Raptors. Raptors um, blew a game last night in ugly fashion. Thunder, 106.25, sixth on the night. Um... I think this is going to be a big time Russ game. I'd like to see how he's done against the Raptors in the past. But could be good for him. Wow, 950 already. Jesus. I've been recording for like a really long time, haven't I? Holy balls. Moving real slow. Um, yeah, this, I like Ross a lot. Maybe Steven Adams. Eleven six and eleven two. I think Russ is in for a decent matchup. I just want to see if he struggled against Toronto in the past. Nope. I probably said Russell Wilson a couple times, so I'm finally getting Russell Westbrook correct. Don't know why I have that verbal tick, but I do. Paul George, 8,700. Um, so he needs 40. I think that DK is just really the spot for him. Adams, 6,800 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. So I like Adams there. And Mello, I don't want. To the Crafters we go. Crafters, 102.25 implied total. 15th on the night. I've been on the Raptors a lot lately, um, including a lot of DeRozan last night, which went tits up real quick. But we want to, I'm going to dig on Kyle Lowry tonight. How has Lowry done in the past against Russ? Only good last year. That's fine. So, Toronto, I'm going to pass on DeMar, and I'm going to sign up for the Kyle Lowry show. I'll look at Surge, and that's probably it. 61 and 59... I don't like the game. I'm going to avoid it here. I don't want anybody else on that squad either. So now we'll go to the Kings hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, Kings are 10 point underdogs at home, 17th on the night. Not a ton to like here.
Ugh, I'm avoiding everything. Bogdan might be the only guy that I would even entertain. Zebo is too expensive, even after he put that hurting on Cleveland in the last one. I can't go after it. Bogdan at 4,000 on DK, I like. He needs 25, 26 for 6x on DK. Which he doesn't really do, so I don't like it anymore. <laughs> now nah, it's a, it's your force feeding kings in this scenario. Like, Willie Cauley-Stein needs 30 on FanDuel. I guess he's done that too straight. Yeah. I... I at least need to take a look at Willie Cauley-Stein. I don't really like anything else, though. Let's go to the Cavs. Cleveland, 109 implied total, third on the night. Coming off the Warriors' loss. Yeah, digging Kevin Love a lot tonight. Love... 84 and 83, but I'm cool with it one way or the other. That's a good Kevin Love spot. Fits his game nicely. 11-5 and 11-7 for LeBron. Ooh. I don't think I like anything else here outside of JR. That's a GPP play for me. I think I'm fading LeBron. On the road in Sacramento, just like a, right after Christmas, it just doesn't feel like a game that he's going to be terribly involved in. Look, he's LeBron James. If he puts up 70 fantasy points, I'm not surprised, but this just doesn't feel like the spot. I'd rather have a lot more of Towns or Russ or AD. Golden State, 108 implied total, which is fifth on the night, hosting the Jazz, which have the worst implied total. Um, this is going to be a weird game. I've been taking guys against the Jazz lately, and it hasn't been going well. So we're looking at Durant and Clay. Might not be the best Draymond Green game. Although, with no Gobert, it's a little interesting. So Durant is 11-7 on FanDuel, 10-9 on DK. Um, I'm fine with Durant. I still like AD more than Durant. Uh, Dre, 87 and 75, so I think Draymond might be a DK guy. I don't love it, but I think I have need to have a couple pieces just because of their price. And then Clay, 71 on FanDuel, 67 on DK, so he needs 35 on FanDuel. Just been there. He's got a couple games that fit. Um, the Jazz do limit threes, though, so that's not really the best look for Clay. I think Durant and Draymond are, are good for me. And Jordan Bell, is this price done anything weird? 49 across the board. I'm good. Next, we want the Jazz, which. I would imagine isn't going to look very good. Worst implied total, 96 points. Uh, they just don't have enough offense. 
and their defense is bad. Well, not bad, but, you know, not having Gobert is a real thing. I think I'll take a look at Rodney Hood. Uh, let's just look at everybody. Mitchell, 7,200 on FanDuel, 70, or 7,000 on DK. So he needs 35. That feels tasty. Um, yeah, maybe not. I like him on FanDuel, but I won't have him. Favors, 50 set. I'm good with favors. Rodney Hood, 5,400 and 6,100. I don't want any of these guys on DK. I think Rubio looks good on FanDuel. That's the only thing I'm interested in. Ricky Rubio on FanDuel. It's just a good price. Finally, last game. Lakers and Grizzlies. Lakers, 100.5 implied total is 16th. They are uh, one and a half or maybe two point favorites at home. You know, no Lonzo. Um... No Brooke Lopez. The assumption is Brandon Ingram plays. I can't imagine I'll want to take him unless we know early. We want to look at Kuz. We want to look at KCP and Jordan Clarkson getting all those minutes because of uh, injuries. Ooh. Cancel. No, delete this sheet. See, again, oh, it's just opening up random double clicks. Okay, Lakers. Kuzma at 7,400. Uh, it's hard to not. It's hard to not have a piece of that. I'm okay with not having Ingram, although he's crazy cheap on DK. Clarkson, 5,500 on both sides. He's just getting the increased minutes, so you, you have to go for Clarkson. And then KCP, $1,000 cheaper on DK. Have to take him on DK. I'm scooping up all four of these dudes. Dropping them in here. But Ingram and KCP are both DK only plays, in my opinion. It's just, you know, it's just too big of a salary gap. I like it. And finally, the Grizz. 98 point implied total, which is second worst on the night. And it's the Grizzlies. We're going to pray that Marcus Gasol can get himself traded to a team that's going to go to the playoffs. That's about it. Yeah, Tyreek Evans, Andrew Harrison, I'm fine with Gasol. They're all in for big games if they want to. Gasol, 8,600 and 8,800. So that's 43. I don't want him on DK. I think he's a little too costly, but I think he looks good on FanDuel. And then Tyreek is 85 and 84. I think that's just FanDuel again as well. Andrew Harrison is 4,000. I'll take him. That's probably it. Oh, that needs to go up there. All right, that is the short list. Let's sort that up. All right, decent amount at each position, although not a lot to like at FanDuel small forward in that I only have two of them, but we'll see. Let's dump this into the optimizer and see where we end up. So first up will be DK. was a long ass video. My apologies, everybody. Come on. Just didn't have the energy this morning. What do we got? It's gonna spit out a bunch of weird shit. 
A lot of Otto Porter. I like that first lineup, though. Harrison, Crabb, George, Otto Porter, Jokic, Mitchell, Lyles, Towns. Yeah. It's going to be a big night on DK. And then on FanDuel... Bought a bunch of uh, Mega Millions tickets last night. Didn't win, so that's why you're at, you guys are actually seeing me today. Ah. Random to five and Fanduel. Russ, Harrison, Mitchell. I'm, it's not going to be the highest one. Russ, Rogier, Mitchell, Clarkson, LeBron, which I don't like. Ubre, Lyles, Dirk, and Cantor. That's an interesting lineup. Uh, it's not for me because of Braun, but you know, I'd be all over something like this. Although I don't want Boogie. I don't know. I don't. I don't see it for Fanduel. So that's it for me, guys. Um, get my. There's the short list again if anybody wants to pause it here. But, you know, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter. You guys know the drill. Back tomorrow, uh, strategy video in the morning, and then we will be back live before lock tomorrow starting at 6. So, bye-bye.